How's it going? So I first wanted to say thank you for 5,000 subscribers. You guys are great. I, when I started the channel, never thought it would get to this point. Um, I didn't know what to expect and I'm just grateful that it's gotten even this far at all. And thank you for being a part of the journey and helping me get there. Thanks for watching, subscribing, and commenting. Um, today I wanted to talk about, uh, there'll also be, by the way, really quickly, I'll probably do a 5,000 subscriber celebration video sometime in the next month is the goal. Uh, if you didn't know, I made one for the 1,000 subscriber mark. You can find it on my channel. It's called Undeniable Dilemma. It's not very popular of a video because it doesn't get promoted with my normal content. It's a little bit different. It's not math related. So uh, this might be similar to that, maybe with a better mic, something like that. So today, though, I wanted to get into what is a radian. And this right here comes from the following authors. Uh, it's this book here. The local schools use this book for their honors pre-cal. Uh, the authors are Sullivan and Sullivan. Um, it's a father-son pair. Where is it? Down here, actually. Sullivan and Sullivan is here. And um, it's pre-cal. This is fourth edition, enhanced with graphing utilities. And um, this PDF on the screen comes from that text. Uh, different chapter than it's located in the fourth edition, but they try to explain kind of how radians work. And I don't know, when I go through this book, I love that book in general. In fact, I think it's a great text. There's like usually over a hundred problems for every section, all of which uh, go from easy to quite difficult. And I think it's a great problem set book and one of the better pre-calc books that I've used. Um, but when they explain kind of how radians work, I feel like it's a little too complicated. And so I have students come into a calc class or a pre-calc lesson or their, their students at school in their calc class and they still don't know what a radian is because it's not usually explained very well. And so what I'm gonna try and do today is go ahead and explain that to you in my way, in this simplistic way, and hopefully we can get that to be understood better. So first, uh, some people say, by the way, that it's a way to measure angles. Well, that's true, but that doesn't really tell you what it is. It's just like, okay, that's descriptive perhaps, but it's not really defining or pinning down what the concept of a radian is. And it's very, I think it's important for people to understand, especially students when you're going through this. So if we look at a circle, I wonder if I can make a circle with this shape. That's not what I wanted. Let's try a regular. Let's try just drawing one. Okay, great. Not too bad of a circle, I guess, for a screen. So a, a, a radian, okay, think about, about this. What do you know about circles? Okay, you know that R, lowercase r typically is the radius. We often use capital R for a circumradius. Um, in radius gets this when you're talking about triangles, but usually just lowercase r for circles in general. So if R is the radius, if you were to draw a line over to here, right, from the center of the circle, we know that that line, the distance of it, the length of it represents uh, the length of a radius. And that would be defined as a radius, a, a, the, the uh, line segment that goes from the center of a circle to its perimeter. Now that perimeter, we have another name for it as well. The perimeter of a circle is called a circumference. And you probably know this formula. C equals two pi r, you probably know that area is equal to pi r squared. These are usually common pieces of knowledge. But let's get into how a radian would work, okay? If I have a central angle, I'm gonna come over here and do another circle briefly, a central angle of 60 degrees, okay? Something like this, okay? It's about 60 degrees it would look something like this. This is the arc for that 60 degree circle. And we could say that that arc is one sixth of the whole circle. Let's say I wanted to measure it differently though, based on the arc length. And let's say I took this radius on the screen and I'm gonna draw it straight up on the side, right here, vertical. So that it comes up, ooh, that's not what I wanted. Come back, why did you move? <laughs> uh, it comes up to about the top of the, of the uh, circle up here so that if I went across this way, you would hit right there. Why? Because that's the same as the radius going up here, right? Same length as a radius. And I want you to pretend for a second that this external radius that we drew is in fact something like a piece of spaghetti or a noodle or a string, 
and you can move it. It's flexible, right? Not rigid, okay? A, a cooked piece of spaghetti or cooked noodle, if you will. But its length is equivalent to the length of one radius. And you're going to take your finger and you're going to push it against the top side of this so that it gets moved over to the circle about here, like this. So that this distance, this red distance now, is the distance that was previously going straight up, but now it's attached to the circle, okay? So now, when you connect the center of the circle to that point, we say that this subtends an arc. The angle, the central angle right here, I'm gonna use a symbol for it, it's a Greek letter theta. It's a, basically a zero with the horizontal slash, kind of how it looks, and you spell that theta. Uh, don't be alarmed, it's just commonly used for angles. It's just like X for algebra. And so if you have this angle theta, notice that theta, this current angle theta in my picture, it subtends an arc that is equal in length to one radius. The arc length itself is one radius. Keep in mind, what is arc length part of? Arc length is part of the famous British knight circumference. Huh. I'm sure that's a terrible pun. Okay, so circumference, yes. Then what does that mean? So circumference, it's part of the circumference. Its arc length is one radius. We say that the measure of theta in radians is one radian. I hope it's kind of coming together now. Uh, one radian is a central angle. The measure of a central angle is one radian when that central angle subtends an arc equal to the length of one radius, okay? So let's kind of write that down. A radian, maybe even put single radian, is a central angle of a circle that subtends an arc of length. We're not talking about its measure. The measure of an arc over here, you could say it's 60 degrees. But if this had a radius of one, its arc length would be two pi r divided by six, because we said it's one sixth of a circle. And that's why 60 degrees is pi over three in its arc length in terms of radians. One radius equals one radian on the circle okay so now why when we say okay how do we convert degrees to radians right if you've got 60 degrees they'll tell you that you multiply it by pi over 180 and it's pi radians to 180 degree ratio and great that's wonderful okay but what is going on why if you have a whole circle 360 degrees we know that that's two pi radians, right? We might have heard that by now. So think about it. 360 degrees, two pi, ra wait a minute, circumference is two pi radius. That, the fact that the circumference has the length two pi r should hopefully make a whole lot more sense now as it ties into what a radian is. No wonder that two pi radians is 360 degrees because there's two pi radii, R-A-D-I-I, -I, that would go around the circle as evidenced by the formula for the circumference. So you can actually do other ways to convert uh, degrees to radians. You don't have to use this ratio. Uh, for instance, if you watch my other video on speed trig, it's just basically a way to quickly come to calculations. Every 45 degree angle in any quadrant is always n pi over 4. So like 1 pi over 4 is 45 in the first quadrant. 3 pi over 4 is a 45 degree angle made with the x-axis in the second quadrant. Technically, it's 135 degrees measured from its horizontal positive x-axis. What about uh, 5 pi over 4? Again, it's a 45 degree angle in quadrant three. As long as the n does not simplify with the four, every n pi over four will be a 45 degree angle. 
So if I tell you 71 pi over four, it's a 45 degree angle in some quadrant as far as the angle made with the X axis. And so you can think about this in different ways like that. So this is it. This is basically what a radius is or a radian is. A radian, a, a single radian, so a radian equal to one unit, one radian, right? Okay, is a central angle of a circle that subtends an arc of length one radius. Great. I hope this helps. And if you enjoyed it, leave me a comment, give it a like, and maybe subscribe if you haven't yet, because a lot of other people did, and they're pretty cool. You could be cool. I'm just saying. All right, that's it. You guys have a good one. I hope you enjoyed the video.